Hey guys, today we're going to talk about building your debris shelter. So while I'm talking to you, I finished all this. I'm going to roll a little smoke here. Now, in that bag, it's off camera there, is my 10 foot by 10 foot tarp. I did this video for Carl because I love the guy. And there's some of you guys I met and I like you. But if I catch you traveling around building a debris shelter, I'm going to beat you. Use your tarp. This thing took me three solid hours to build. Okay, that's just building it. That's not getting prepared for building a fire. That's not looking for any water. That's not looking for any food. That's just building the shelter. This is two months old. I built this two months ago. This is all dry in the inside. Now how I chose this location was behind you is a tree line that was put in to block the wind. So I know where the wind comes from there. So I knew where I needed the front of this. I know the wind mostly comes from behind me, so that's why I put the back that direction. So there's a little things that you've got to pay attention to so that it'll work for you. You don't need your smoke from your fire blowing back in the inside of you. Now, on the inside, I made it higher so that you could see it. The problem with making it higher, it should be about this level right here, if you can see that. So that I can keep the heat in and keep more of the weather out, but it'd be difficult to actually see it and see in the inside if I put it lower. So I made it a little bit higher for you guys. Now, all this that I built here, I took off from the ground. Not one piece that I cut any tree down. I don't know if you can see it clearly, but this has got a hook on it. And I picked this piece of wood on purpose. So once I tied my branch across here, I could hook this limb in because this what everybody's going to, this what all the rest of us going to lean up against. Okay, that's what's going to take the weight. All right. So I went around and I got all the branches and stuff laying on the ground and I started building it as in a skeleton. As soon as I got enough branches and stuff on it, covered it real good and I used vine and everything else so I needed to hold the um, leaves. So once I got it to that level, the next thing I needed to do was I needed to gather the leaves up, okay? Now, to gather the leaves up, you can use your jacket, the outside of your jacket. If you carry a, a small tarp, I do have a very small tarp, you can use that. So, you've got to have a way of gathering up the leaves. This is put together with zip ties. This is all stuff I found around here that I had to cut out of my way. Now I'm going to demonstrate for you, I'm going to, so you can still be on camera. I'm going to rake this, and you can see this thing can rake. It actually works. All right, that's exactly how I gathered all the leaves to put on this puppy. Now what you have to know about the inside first is these leaves have to be my dog wore this down, that was three feet tall. The inside leaves have to be three feet deep. So you're insulating yourself from the ground. That's very important because if you're building a debris shelter, you've already messed up. You don't have everything that you need to survive properly. So now you're down to this, three feet deep. Once you get all your branches and stuff that you need on the top, you build your skeleton, okay? Now you've got to put three feet worth of leaves on top of that. Like I said, three hours, old school, did it with stuff that I can make that I carry in my rucksack and on my person. I built this debris shelter for you. It's been up for two months. This is all dry on the inside. I don't want to get off camera, but that's all dry. Two months sitting here, but every day that you have your debris shelter, you've got to keep improving it, all right? My little dog, if you see the still photos, she went in the inside and she started chewing on the branches and made some of the leaves start falling down on the inside. And then I had to go on the outside and add more leaves to it. What we need to do from this point is I need to show you the backside of it so I can show you how I put the, the branches on 
the top of it at the end to hold all the leaves in place. Just putting the leaves on it, they're going to blow off, right? So I need to put branches on top of it. I need to be able to show you guys that. So it's done in layers, but you can't just put leaves on top and then not cover the leaves. You have to cut other branches to be on top to hold the leaves in place. Okay, guys? What I want to show you is on the side of this right here. If you look down in here, you can see a lot of the um, uh, vines and small branches I have. That goes over the actual uh, structure, the A-frame, if you will, the pieces that I put on there because it's got to hold the leaves. Then once I put the leaves on, what you see are these other branches on top of it like this because it's got to hold the leaves. Now my dog went in there and chewed a hole in there and I had to put leaves on the top. You normally don't have to do that. I'm not trying to hide this thing. I'm trying to make it waterproof. Remember, leaves have to be three feet thick so the water will shed off. Do not cheat on the leaves. But they're not going to stay there unless you start putting stuff like this on the outside. You've got to hold the leaves in place. It goes clear up to the top, okay? Now, when I built this, I told you I picked this site. I knew which way the weather came from here. I looked at those trees there, which is a windbreak, and I picked a tree that faced it the direction I wanted so it would blow my smoke not back in on me, but away from my inside of my debris shelter. Now, when I built it, I have a cross member here. This cross member goes over from this tree over here to this tree here. I tied it on in place. Now, like I said before, so that you can get good shots of it, I tied it higher than I want. That's my first thing you have to do. Normally, you're going to have it down low to keep heat in and keep the weather out, okay? So it's a little bit high. So it gets lashed on. That's your first part. That's your cross member. Next, you need your main beam, and that's this one right here. Now, it's got to be long enough that you can get your body in the inside and be completely covered, not sticking out from the outside, okay? So that's what I use this long beam. That's about 12 feet long inside there. So I can get two of us in there. This is only built enough for two. If I had to get all four of us in there, I could. We'd be actually warmer, but it's going to be a tight fit. I chose this one so I didn't have to lash it on here. It's got a hook on this that just came with it, a branch that broke, and it able to go across this, this cross member right here. So now it holds it in place. So that another part I didn't have to do. I didn't have to lash it on there. I'm going to take what nature gives me and I'm going to use it to its best point. Now remember, this was three solid hours without a break, not even having a cigarette, not even having a cup of coffee, working to get this up. Now my rule of thumb is when I'm going to stop, I have three hours of daylight. It doesn't work for doing a debris shelter because I couldn't do anything about getting firewood, building any kind of rock shelter, reflection for my fire. I wasn't able to get any water. I wasn't able to look for any food. All I could get was my shelter up. My backpack is a 10 by 10 foot tarp. Carry your tarp with you. In 15 minutes, I got my shelter up versus three hours, and I couldn't do anything but this. It's a lot of work. In, if you don't, my dad, when we had to build these, would pour five gallons of water on top of us in the inside to see if it worked. You're not going to have that luxury. Don't cheat on the depth of the, of the uh, leaves that you're going to put in there. Three feet thick on the bottom, three feet thick on the top. And then you've got to cover it with these other branches or it's going to blow that stuff off. It's going to move on you. You don't want that to happen. All right, guys. I think I've covered this about enough. Make comments on the bottom. Catch you guys later. If you like this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, make sure you follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter so you don't miss out on anything. If you like the shirt that we're wearing in the video, you can get it in our store.